Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss this lab activity, implement a third channel. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA project support or CCNA version 7 online classes, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Okay, coming back to our lab activity, implement a third channel. Here we can see the topology. Uh, we have to design this uh, topology uh, in our Cisco Packet Tracer. Also, we can see our addressing table, VLAN table. Okay, we will go through the objectives. Build the network and configure basic device settings. In part 2, create VLANs and assign a switch ports. Then configure 802.1Q trunks between the switches. And finally implement and verify an ether channel between the switches. Just we will go through this background. Link aggregation allows the creation of logical links that are comprised of two or more physical links. This provides increased throughput beyond using only one physical link. Link aggregation also provides redundancy if one of the links fail. In this lab, we will configure a third channel, a form of a link aggregation used in switched networks. We will configure a third channel using link aggregation control protocol that is LACP. They given a note here. LACP is a link aggregation protocol that is defined by IEEE 802.3 AD and it is not associated with any specific vendor. Okay, LACP allows Cisco switches to manage Ethernet channels between switches that conform to the 802.3 AD protocol. We can configure up to 16 ports to form a channel using this LACP. 8 of the ports are in active mode and the uh, other 8 are in the standby mode. When any of the active ports fail, a standby port becomes active. Standby mode works only for LACP and not for PAGP. Okay, these are the some of the uh, instruction, I mean some of the information regarding LACP. Again a note, the switches used with the CCNA hands-on labs are Cisco Catalyst. 2960. Okay, we will uh, use uh, this uh, model uh, Catalyst 2960 and other switches and uh, Cisco IOS versions can be used depending on the model and uh, Cisco IOS version the commands available and output produced might vary from what is shown in the labs. Okay, anyways, we are using uh, latest uh, Cisco Packet Tracer version 7.3 uh, so we can implement this uh, ether channel. Also, they given a note, make sure that the switches have been erased and have no startup configurations. If you are unsure, contact your instructor. Yeah, as always we say, um, here we are going to implement this uh, third channel using Cisco Packet Tracer. So no need to worry about this uh, note. No need to erase uh, startup configuration. If you are implementing in a real time, I mean uh, using real uh, switches, then uh, you have to check this uh, startup configuration. So now we will uh, go to the required resources. We required two switches um, and uh, Cisco 2960 is preferred. Two PCs, console cables to configure the Cisco IOS device via the console ports, then Ethernet cables as shown in the topology. Yes, so these are the uh, required resources. Coming to the instructions, in part 1, build the network and configure basic device settings. In part 1, we will set up the network topology and configure basic settings on the PC, host and switches. So step 1, cable the network as shown in the topology, attach the devices as shown in the topology diagram and cable as necessary. Coming to our topology, uh, here we can see we will uh, design this topology in our Cisco Packet Tracer. We required uh, two switches and uh, two entity devices. Okay. We will uh, do it one by one. Uh, I will expand a little more this uh, Packet Tracer. Okay. So here uh, we can see network devices. We will choose uh, switches. 
and we have a 2960 series switch just press control and click on this 2960 switch so that we can add multiple switches actually we record only two anyways just press control and click on 2960 then coming to our workspace here is one switch again here is another switch then press escape and here in this topology we can see the physical name they given s1 and s2 we will rename these uh, switches S1 and S2 just for identification. Also, we required two PCs PC A, PC B. Coming to entity devices, click on entity devices, then uh, choose entity devices, and here we can see PC. We will add uh, two PCs so you can add like this, or you just press control and you can add multiple devices. We will rename these devices PC A and this is a PC dash B now we will connect these devices coming to connections and here we will choose copper straight through to connect from PC to switch so from PC dash A fast Ethernet 0 then on S1 FA 0 slash 6 and here we can see they mentioned that port and here PC dash B should be connected to FS 0 slash 18. So coming to PC dash B, faster Ethernet 0, S2, FA 0 slash 18. Now we have to connect these switches S1 and S2. Okay, here we can see we have to connect to FA 0 slash 1 to FA 0 slash 1 and FA 0 slash 2 to FA 0 slash 2. So redundancy, right? So we are connecting the same devices. So we can go for copper crossover click on copper crossover you can press control from keyboard and you can click on this copper crossover so that we can do multiple uh, connections then from s1 fa0 slash 1 coming to s2 fa0 slash 1 next is uh, again on s1 fa0 slash 2 then coming to s2 fa0 slash 2 Okay, just press escape and we are ready with our topology in a Cisco Packet Tracer. Okay, now in step 2, configure basic settings for each switch. Assign a device name to the switch. Okay, we can do that. Many times we configured house name but still we will do that. S1 CLI Enable Conf T we will set the host name as S1. Then we will go to S2 CLI enable conf t. This is a short for configure terminal. Okay. Host name as S2. Next is disable DNS lookup to prevent the router from attempting to translate incorrectly entered commands as through their host names okay we will uh, disable this uh, dns lookup uh, now we are in s2 okay first of all we will do in s2 you have to give the command you no know, ip domain lookup press enter then we will go to s1 no ip domain lookup Next is assign class as the privileged exec encrypted password. Yeah, this is enabled secret, right? See, we are uh, doing all these basic configurations many times. So what happens? We just remember these commands and we never forget all these commands. So that is the advantage. Okay, so we will go to this assign class as the privileged exec encrypted password. First of all, we will go to S1. We know encrypted, we have to use a secret, enable secret. Enable password is a plain text password, right? So enable secret, enable space secret, password as uh, I think class, right? Yes. Then we will go to S2. Enable secret as class. Next is assign Cisco as the console password and enable login. Uh, at the same time, we will uh, do uh, Cisco as the VTY password and enable login. We will do this at D and E together. 
because we have to go to these uh, lines okay we will do it in s1 first we will go to line console 0 we will set the password as cisco then we have to give the command login we will exit then we will go to a line vty for all the lines 0 to 15 that means total 16 lines then we will set the password it's cisco then login command right then we can give end then we will go to s2 first of all we will go to line console 0 we will set the password as specified it's cisco then login command then exit from line console then we will go to line vty 0 to 15 all the lines then we will set the password as cisco then login command then end next is encrypt the plain text passwords yes we know the command service password encryption in global configuration mode okay conf t we have a service password dash encryption okay this presenter coming to s2 configure terminal here you have to give service password dash encryption coming to the next basic configuration create a banner that warns anyone accessing the device that unauthorized access is prohibited okay we will set banner MOTD message of the day it's just a message for the intruders warning message okay we can set that in global configuration mode right banner MOTD uh, we will start with a delimiter any character or symbol can be used we will use this double quote we will give okay we can give authorized access only okay now we will go to s2 banner MOTD then our message with delimiter authorized access only and we have to end with the same delimiter what we used in the beginning okay then presenter next is uh, save the running configuration to the startup configuration file uh, but before that here we can see they mentioned to set the clock on the switch uh, to today's uh, time and uh, date so we will uh, set this uh, clock first then we will uh, save uh, from uh, ram to nvram use the question mark to help with the correct sequence of parameters needed to execute this command yeah we can do that so we'll go to s1 we will go to global configuration mode so we'll exit from here because we can do this uh, in uh, privileged exit mode we have the command uh, clock then space will put a question mark we can see the set command then space again question mark we have to give the time in this format h h m m s s okay we can set the time then we have to specify the day of the month we will give it 25 then month june year 2020 yes so now we can give copy running config startup config we can give run space start presenter destination file name startup dash config yeah we are fine with that now we will go to s2 exit from this uh, global configuration mode then we have a clock set okay then day of the month then month of the year then we have to specify the year now copy running config startup config copy space run space start we can give in short or even we can make the maximum short we can give a cop space 
R space ST. So this is the shortest command. Press enter. Destination file name startup dash config. Yeah, press enter again. So uh, we done uh, basic settings on both switches. Coming to step three, configure PC host. Refer to the addressing table for PC host address information. Okay, we will configure this PC A and PC B. Coming to our addressing table, here we can see PC A IP address. I will copy that. Also, we can see it's a subnet mask. Okay, coming to PC A, we'll go to desktop, IP configuration, and here we can give that address. Subnet mask, it's correct. Now we'll close it. And then we will get the IP address of uh, PC B. We will copy this address 20.4 coming to PC B desktop IP configuration IP address. We pasted that something to mask default to something to mask. No change. Now we will go to part two. Create VLANs and assign a switch ports. It's really interesting. In part two, we will create VLANs as specified in the table above on both switches. We will then assign the VLANs to the appropriate interface and verify your configuration settings. Complete the following task on each switch. Okay, uh, in step one, we will create VLANs on the switches. On both switches, create and name the required VLANs from the VLAN table above. Okay, coming to our VLAN table, it's your. We can see we will create this uh, VLANs, uh, VLAN 10, 20, triple N, and 1000 uh, in S1 as well as S2. And we can see its name here. We will create it as per this uh, VLAN table. First of all, we will do it in S1. I will keep it here. Mm, yeah so that we can view this vlan table as well as our is1 cli prompt is visible now okay conf t you will create the vlan 10 first and its name is a management okay i will move here right then we will create a vlan 20 I will do like this. VLAN 20 is clients. Okay. VLAN 20. Name is uh, clients. Correct. Press enter. Then we will create this triple uh, nine. Its name is uh, parking underscore a lot. VLAN triple nine, right? Yeah. Name is uh, parking underscore a lot. Also, we have this uh, 1000 and its name is a uh, native. Done. Now we will close this S1 and we will do it on S2. We will create these uh, same VLANs uh, in this uh, switch S2 also. Coming to S2. VLAN 10 management we will give conf t vlan 10 name is uh, management next is vlan 20 its a name is a uh, clients okay next we have vlan triple nine its name is uh, parking underscore lot correct then we have this uh, 1000 name is a uh, native VLAN 1000 name is native coming to B configure and activate the management interface on each switch using the IP address information in the addressing table okay coming to our addressing table here we can see IP address for the device S1 and S2 and we can see for the interface VLAN 10 Okay, we will set this IP address for the SVIs. So first of all, we will go to S1. Just I will copy this IP address. 
And here we can see it's a sun to mask. We will exit from this VLAN. Then we will go to interface VLAN 10. Okay. Then we will set the IP address. Then it's sun to mask. Mm -hmm. No need to give a no shutdown command because here we can see interface VLAN 10 changed state to up. Okay. Next we will set IP address for this switch S2 and I will copy this address coming to S2. Exit then go to the interface VLAN 10 Okay, now we can see interface VLAN 10 changed state to up. Just press enter. Then we have to set the IP address as per our addressing table. I already copied that. I have to give this to mask. Yeah. Next is assign all unused ports on the switch to the parking underscore a lot VLAN. Configure them for a static access mode and administratively deactivate them. That means uh, we have to shut down all the unused ports in these switches. Okay, uh, I think coming to our VLAN table, here we can see all the unused ports. Or even we can uh, verify from this topology better. We used FA0 slash 6. Also, uh, we can uh, use the FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2. So we have to shut down all other uh, ports. We will go to this uh, switch S1. Okay, then we will exit from this uh, interface. Then we will go to the interfaces as a range because here we are going to uh, select multiple interfaces, right? So we have to use range. We will give FA0 slash 1 and 2 we used. So we will give from 3 till 5 because of 6 we used. Then we have comma FA0 slash uh, 7 till 24, right? Also we have 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. We have to specify that also. It's a G0 slash 1 dash 2. That means a gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash press enter and we have to give switch port a modus access also we have to assign these ports to um, the vlan parking lots right switch port access vlan uh, it's a parking lot triple nine okay so vlan triple nine then we have to shut down these unused ports give it the command shut down In the same way we have to do in S2. Okay, right. So just we'll exit from this interface. And we will go to the interfaces as a range FA. Uh, 0 slash 1 and 2 we used. So we will start from 3 till 15 because we used 16, right? I will verify it. Oh, it's 18. That means we have to go, go till 17. Okay. Comma FA 0 slash 19 till 24 correct also we have two uh, gigabit ethernet ports g0 slash 1 dash 2 okay we will give a switch port modus access switch port access vlan triple nine and we have to shut down these ports now we will go to step two Assign VLANs to the correct switch interfaces. Assign used ports to the appropriate VLAN specified in the VLAN table above and configure them for static access mode. Okay, coming to our VLAN table, here we can see VLAN 10 is used for the management purpose. Yes, we already configured uh, this uh, management interface on S1 as well as S2. Now, uh, here we can see we have to assign this port FA0 slash 6 in S1. Uh, to VLAN 20. Also, we can see FS0 slash 18 to VLAN 20. And we can see uh, these ports are connecting to these uh, clients, right? PC-A and PC-B. Uh, 
B. So we will uh, do it in uh, S1 first, that is F S zero slash six, which is connected to this P C dash A. Here we can see that means we are going to uh, add this uh, P C in VLAN twenty. Okay, we will go to S1. Just exit from this uh, interfaces. We will go to only the interface F A zero slash six. I have to verify it. Yeah, it's six. Then we will give a switch port the modus access. Then a switch port access VLAN twenty. Right, this is for VLAN twenty. Now we will go to S two. We will exit from these interfaces. Then we will go to interface F S zero slash eighteen. Only one interface. Switch port modus access. Switch port access, it's a VLAN 20. Right? Next, we will issue the show VLAN brief command and verify that the VLANs are assigned to the correct ports. Okay, we will go to S1 CLI. We will expand this window so that we can view it clearly. We will give end show VLAN brief and here we can see the details. We can see FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2 is still with default VLAN that is VLAN 1 uh, because we have to make this uh, ports as trunk we will do that. Then here we can see FA0 slash 6 is assigned to VLAN 20 and all other unused ports we can see uh, in VLAN triple nine that is parking lot that's correct we will go to S2 and we will verify it exit sorry we can give end uh, show VLAN brief and here we can see if A0 slash 18 is assigned to VLAN 20 that is clients and we can see two ports fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 is in a default vlan 1 and all other unused ports are assigned to vlan triple nine that is parking lot now we will go to part 3 configure 802.1q trunks between the switches in part 3 we will manually configure interfaces fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 as 802.1q trunks. Change the switch port mode on the interfaces to force trunking. Use the interface range command to reduce the number of commands required. Make sure to do this on both switches. Quite simple and interesting, right? Okay, so first of all, we will do it in S1. configure terminal we will go to interfaces as a range because we have a fa0 slash 1 and 2 we can give fa0 slash 1 dash 2 then we have to give a switch port mode trunk presenter okay now we will go to s2 even we can verify it in s1 better i just i will verify and we will go end we have the command show interfaces trunk and here we can see this support fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 is uh, trunking and we can see its mode is on that means manually we configured trunk and in native vlan it's in de uh, default native vlan 1 now we will go to s2 and we will verify this uh, trunking because uh, it become trunk automatically show interfaces a trunk and here we can see these two ports fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 is trunking but here we can see the mode is auto that means automatically become trunk uh, when we configure the other side uh, this side become automatically trunk but in the instruction they specified uh, we must configure manually on both switches right so it should be the mode should be on here okay we will do that conf t interface as a range fa0 slash 1 dash 2 
switch port mode set trunk okay just end and again we will give that command show interfaces trunk now we can see this mode is on coming to the next instruction as a part of the trunk configuration set the native vlan to 1000 on both switches you may see error messages temporarily while the two interfaces are configured for a different native vlans yeah that native uh, vlan mismatch right okay we will uh, configure this uh, native vlan first of all we will go to s1 mm -hmm. we have to go to those interfaces again now props configure terminal uh, interface as a range fa0 slash 1 dash 2 and here we are going to give a switch port trunk native vlan we have 1000 right yeah then presenter and here we can see that message inconsistent local vlan anyways we have to configure in this switch s2 also so that we can restore that uh, problem coming to s2 see that mismatch native vlan mismatch discovered on this uh, interface with s1 faster theron 0 slash 2 okay we will uh, configure terminal interface as a range fa0 slash 1 dash 2 then here we will give a switch port trunk native vlan 1000 here we can see that command press enter Next is, as another part of a trunk configuration, specify that VLANs 10, 20 and 1000 are allowed to cross the trunk. Okay, we can do that. So we will go to S1 and we will go to those interfaces. Okay. Oh. Password is Cisco. Enable password is class. Configure a terminal. We will go to those interfaces as a range fa0 slash 1 and 2 so 1 dash 2 here we will give the command so to port the trunk we have allowed right just i will press tab allowed vlan we will give let me see that it's a 10 20 and 1000 right we can give that here 10 20 and 1000 then press enter in the same way coming to s2 oh, here also we have to give the password cisco enable password is class conf t configure terminal you will go to those interfaces as a range fa0 slash 1 dash 2 then we will give a switch port a trunk and we have to give only allowed vlans allowed vlans such as 10 comma 20 comma 1000 right yeah then presenter now issue the show interfaces trunk command to verify the trunking ports native vlan and allowed vlans across the trunk okay coming to s1 we can give that i will maximize it you will give end show command show vlan brief and here we can see the details okay uh, so just we'll give show interfaces a trunk we can see uh, port fa0 slash 1 fa0 slash 2 mode is on status a trunking and we can see native vlan is 1000 also we can see allowed vlans 10 20 and 1000 only the same way we can verify in s2 end show interfaces a trunk and here we can see ports native vlan 1000 also we can see allowed vlans 10 20 and 1000 only Now, here we have a question. Why is the VLANs in spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned? 
entry different for fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 okay we will verify that on s1 and here we can see that vlans in a spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned here we can see fa0 slash 2 is uh, shows a none coming to our topology here we can see this uh, link fa0 slash 2 is in amber it's a blocked state right due to uh, a spanning tree i mean uh, due to redundancy so spanning tree is in effect so that's why uh, we can see this uh, uh, fa0 slash 2 given us none okay now coming to part 4 implement and verify and a third channel between the switches okay this is also really interesting a third channel vlans all these are quite simple and interesting yeah so create a LACP based a third channel using FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2 using group number 1 uh, with both switches actively negotiating the third channel protocol. Use the interface range command to reduce the number of commands required. We will do this configuration. First of all, we will go to S1. Okay. Conf T. We will go to those interface as a range that is fa0 slash 1 dash 2 1 and 2 and here we will give channel group then i will put a question mark we have to specify the channel group number uh, so as specified it's one space again put a question mark we can see we have to specify the mode lacp or pagp which mode we have to use mode space and we can see uh, here we have the mode uh, active means enable LACP and conditionally. Yeah, clearly they mentioned we have to uh, do this LACP. And here we can see they mentioned, oh, let me see that actively negotiating the third channel protocol. So we have to use this active mode, right? On both sides, yeah. Mode active, then presenter. Okay, here we can see creating a port channel interface port channel 1. Mm -hmm. Now we will go to S2. Configure terminal. We will go to those in the interface as a range FA0 slash 1 dash 2. Then we will create that channel group. It's 1 mode is active right presenter then after the third channel is configured the virtual port channel interface is automatically created now interface port channel 1 represents the logical interface of the bundled physical ports fa0 slash 1 and fa0 slash 2 yes that's correct Additionally, the port channel will inherit the configuration of the first physical port added to the third channel. Now, issue the show interface trunk command to verify trunking is still in place. Uh, what does the port PO1 represent? This is port channel 1, right? Yeah. So, we will go to S1 and we will give this show command again. Give end show interfaces trunk now we can see it shows po1 that means port channel 1 mode we can see on encapsulation okay status trunking and we can see native vlan 1000 also we will verify in s2 give the command end show interfaces uh, trunk and here we can see port channel 1, status trunking, native VLAN is 1000. Now, finally, use the show a third channel summary command to verify the third channel configuration. Okay. Show a third channel summary. And here we can see the details.
here we can see the support channel 1 protocol we used LACP and here we can see these ports are bundled together uh, FS0 slash 1 and FS0 slash 2 and we got this uh, port channel 1 right we can verify in S2 show a third channel summary and here we can see the protocol LACP and these ports are bundled FS0 slash 1 and FS0 slash 2 and become this port channel 1. Actually here we did not do any end to end uh, connectivity testing right. So just I will ping from PC dash A to PC dash B. So we will get the IP address of PC dash B just copy that then coming to PC dash A we will go to command prompt. Uh, here we will uh, ping to PC dash B. Here is the address, and we can see we get the replies. So we can see packets sent for received for lost zero. Okay, that's all in this lab activity. Implement a third channel. Now, dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions, please comment below. Uh, or uh, you can uh, contact our team using our website link you will get from the description below and if you like our video give a thumb and share with all your friends stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video thank you